Hello everybody, I'm Jeanette with Pismo Beach Chamber and I'm here today for our Learning Curve Summit with, of course, Valerie McCardo Hi. and our new Chief of Police, Jeff Smith. Welcome. Thank you. We're so yes. excited to have you. <laughs> Most definitely. And we've Thank had you. the luxury of already kind of, we've done a few meet and greets, so um, the business community has been able to come out and meet with you and talk and discuss different things, but um, tell our viewers um, a little bit more about yourself and where you come from and what you did before and yeah. all that good stuff, you know. Love to, love to. So I spent the last 18 and a half years in San Luis Obispo. Uh, I served at almost all ranks, including I was the intern police chief for the last six months after Chief Cantrell left. Right. Um, so I come with a lot of experience, investigations, uh, working with our community, partnering with our businesses. I, I feel very fortunate coming from a community, I think that's similar to Pismo where you know, we have a, a population that enjoys the quality of life that we have here on the Central Coast, um, but we also have a very thriving business community that depends not only on their local residents, but um, the population that comes in to enjoy all the amenities we have. So I think a lot of what I learned and what I bring from San Luis Obispo really translates to Pismo Beach. Um, for me, coming to Pismo Beach is super, you know, just an honor and special. Um, this city brought me to the Central Coast as my wife grew up here. Uh, not grew up here, but grew up vacationing here <laughs> and um, had always wanted to move. And as we had the opportunity to, we did. Um, prior to San Luis Obispo, I worked for the Fontana Police Department for two years. And prior to that, I was a school teacher. Um, oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, I, I started, I taught in fourth grade, and then I uh, did seventh grade, which I considered on the job training and for law enforcement. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Um, no teenagers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah, and uh, I did serve in the uh, uh, United States Coast Guard Reserve for six years and uh, um, got my education at Azusa Pacific University and have both a, a bachelor's and master's degree. So nice. that's me in a nutshell. I'm a family man, married, and I'm blessed with three kids. Three kids. Yes. How old? Ages? Uh, 19, 17, and 11. Nice. Yes. You're going to have a preteen. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, he started preteen a long time ago because okay. I, I have the two teenagers and okay. he's keeping up with them oh, all the time. You go. Yeah, yes. That's great. That's yeah. great. So, um, just kind of, I mean, you've been here for a couple of months now, almost, right? A uh, month and a half. A month and a half. Okay. So, you've, you've been able to kind of like cruise through things, meet a lot of the business community, hopefully. Um, and work with City Council and Jim yeah. Lewis. And so how, how are things for you so far? Uh, things have been great. Um, more than anything, I have appreciated how welcoming, welcoming the community has been, especially our business community, as I've had a number of opportunities to go out and meet and greet people. But this is just a great community to be a part of. Um, I really feel appreciated as your police chief. Um, and I have really appreciated the feedback that I've received on just the positive relationship that our residents and our business community really feel they have with their police department. And really, that's one of my number one goals. Um, my primary job is to serve you, serve our residents, our business owners, and those who come to this community. And knowing that I'm, I'm at a place that already has a strong relationship with their police department nice. is is uh, incredible and just makes my job so much easier and I look and I and I really hope to continue to further and build on that relationship um, during my time here awesome and and we could tell I mean as soon as you came in and I know Jim introduced us initially you know it was important to, to kind of get you in front of people especially the business community have those meet and greets have those conversations and and that shows something, you know, as far as you are concerned, too, that speaks to us. It says you're willing to do those things. And, I mean, you're here with us here today. <laughs> you know, um, that, that says a lot to the community and yeah. to us as a business community. So we appreciate it. Yeah, I, I want to be available. That is important to me. And for those who haven't met me yet, um, I am available. Um, I'm not just saying that, and, and that is important throughout my career. Um, you know, one of the things I've told the bu business community, and I'll share for the, the, those of you who haven't met me yet, that um, if you ever call me and say, sorry to bother you, but um, you will hurt my feelings because if you feel you are, I, if I've given you a reason to feel like you are bothering me, then I'm not doing my job. So that is important to me that if 
there is a need or if there's something that I can help our businesses with or our residents uh, with, I don't want it to feel like it's a bother to reach out to the police department or even the police chief. And that's a good segue to, so you guys, I believe it's the beginning of each month, you, um, you are willing to meet with the community and they can email or submit um, an appointment. Can yes. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, um, it st started with Chief Miller, so I, and, I, and I really think it was a great practice, but uh, the first Monday of the month, he opens uh, his office up to allow people to come in. I will segue with that with, um, I, <laughs> I am going to Georgia next week, so I will not be here for the first Monday of this month. So I apologize. I, I know they'll go on to make an so appointment. So the first week of June. Uh, yes, right. well, I'm leaving Saturday and I'll be gone okay. all, all that week. So, okay. Okay. Um, but that being said, Yes, um, I um, before it was more of an open format. Stop by, and um, as I talked with my admin assistant and others, sometimes they get a little crowded, or, yeah. or people would all come at the same time. So I wanted to change it to an, an appointment base. Nice. That way, um, people aren't sitting and waiting for long periods of time. And also, selfishly, if there's no one that's going to come, um, I can go home and have dinner with my family yeah. on a okay. time. So, so okay. hopefully that works for everybody. But um, I, you know, and and if that doesn't work. I'm available um, during other times and okay. as, as my schedule allows. Okay. And that's not calling 911. Yeah. <laughs> Unless there's emergency. <laughs> How can someone schedule that? Um, the be the person that knows my calendar better than me is Harmony. my uh, yeah uh, Harmony <laughs> Harmony <laughs> <our girl>. Harmony's <laughs> Harmony is is that it's is the chief's admin assistant and uh, Harmony Brown um, she she helps keep my schedule and um, you can reach out to her yeah and we'll post the number here in the feed okay. so that everybody knows how they can go ahead and yeah. get in touch with Harmony if needed yeah and I would I, I would really love to say if there are downtown businesses that I haven't been to your business or I haven't met you invite me down uh, my goal Goal here in the next, you know, couple months, as things have slowed down, is to be more out on the street, walking around. And nice. if you see me walking by, please invite me in. Or, you know, I, I don't want to interrupt your businesses, um, but uh, if there's an opportunity, I, w um, I am very approachable, and I want to be approachable. Feel free to run out, grab me, come and talk to me, introduce yourself. Nice. That's very important nice. to me. And I do know they can reach Harmony on her email at hbrown yes. at pismobeach.org. Yes. She's been great. She's, She's been amazing. very responsive. She's been really great. So yeah. That's, that's always going to happen. Yeah. And so, so far with the business community and having conversations and the meetings that you've been having, are, is there anything that's standing out as far as what some concerns might be or needs? I, I know as we approach June 15th, yeah. which is like the oh, big yeah. hurrah day, yeah. you know, people are, are still unsure, the business community, I'm sure not just here, but everywhere is unsure what that's gonna look like yeah. and what we can expect. And so what, do you, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I think that's the challenge as we start to come out of hopefully the pandemic and go back to whatever our new normal will be. Um, I think the city's goal is to make sure our businesses and our residents, one, feel safe, um, but also find a way to move forward and to be successful and for our, our businesses to continue to thrive, for us to be a, a continual destination location. And as the police chief, I need to find ways, how, how can I support that and make sure that as you come into town, we're still being responsible, but we are open and we are open for business. So um, I, those are the things we're focusing on and looking at how we accomplish that as, you know, prior to me getting here, the city did made some um, uh, changes and, you know, we've, we've, we're working with the business community right now to see which of those changes we can keep, which we might have to modify a little bit. And I know the city manager and our council, um, and one of their goals is to make sure that we work with our business community to help them be successful. So we're not sure what that looks like right now. Um, right. I'm in a lot of meetings with that and, and we'll continue to make that a focus as we move forward. And, and a little bit about what um, you're probably speaking to, at least to some degree, would be the outdoor dining yeah. um, that's that's been established since COVID. And, you know, we did a survey on, on our Facebook page and probably a lot of you um, submitted for that survey. And, you know, we had over a thousand responses mm -hmm. on that survey. And they're still coming in. And they are still coming in. So, um, so it's that kind of information that's helpful for us to put together, you know, in a presentation style format for the city and those of you to review, to know what not just the business community is looking for, but, but you know, the, the tourists coming into the area, the residents, you know, mm -hmm. it, it, there's a lot involved. And then 
we can't discount and not think about the fact that we're already impacted with parking downtown, mm -hmm. which continues to be a challenge. And so it's not that easy, I guess, you know, right. to say, look, we're going to keep it. We're going to move it forward. There's a conversation that needs to be had. There's permitting. There's all kinds of things that take place in that. And so when we're able to work with the city the way we are on behalf of the business community, I think it just kind of helps us all collectively work together toward a solution. And it may not be one way or the other. It may be in the middle. I don't know. But we have yet to find out. And that's just kind of how things, you know, shake out sometimes. So, yep. Yep. Um, but and as far as tourists and, you know, that's since the pandemic and and i know that the, the there's a peer counter and i mean our numbers have just been rising 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 yeah. you know and, and i'm sure you're part of those meetings and hearing like how many people are coming on a regular basis um we do have um you know memorial day weekend which when this video's uh viewed it's going to be passed yeah but um so we're not exactly sure what those expectations are going to be although we expect that it's going to be pretty crazy here. Mm -hmm. um, we've got 4th of July around the corner. And, and again, I would say spring break, we heard from the business community about how, how insane it was down here yeah. and how just droves and droves of people, which is an amazing thing, though. Yeah. I mean, still, it's like our beach community has absolutely thrived and continues to thrive, and people are not going to stop coming here. I think the message mainly for, for what you have to deliver to our viewers is the safety the being cautious of things mm. you know the um pulling out of walking across streets like you want to talk a little bit about those kind of concerns and absolutely and and i know coming that was a priority something i needed to focus on um and really our downtown core as we have those large groups sometimes it can take an officer in a patrol car 10 or 15 minutes just to get down get to a call um, so I'm really looking at staffing models on how I increase our, our presence downtown. Mm -hmm. um, one thing, as uh, we get up to full staffing, I have two guys um, in the following week, next week, coming out of the academy. Mm -hmm. Or not, yeah, not the week I'm gone, but the week after, right. uh, the second week in June, is once we get them trained, we are going to add a second bike person downtown okay. during our busy hours. Um, Yay. It's my boss. <laughs> Should I answer it? <laughs> you now know I had a good reason for hanging up on you. <laughs> it's their fault. <laughs> Um, but well, I do want to make sure we have visibility down there and, and really between the hours, you know, uh, you know, anywhere from 11 to nine o'clock at night when, you know, our people are starting to come down for lunch or coming off the beach and, and being in our restaurants. Um, the other thing is city, the city manager really helped set me up for success by increasing my budget. So during those busy holiday weekends or, or um, uh, summertime, I can add a foot patrol person Good. downtown. Good. So for Memorial Day, mm -hmm. since we, we talked about that, um, we will have two bikes and a foot patrol wow. Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. Okay. So again, as there's large crowds, I hope you do see them out there. Okay. They will, I'm sure, be very busy. Um, and I hope that will, um, you know, just be a sign of, you know, uh, safety yeah. on there and just letting those that are coming and know that we do have a number of people out and about yeah i think just presence you know yeah. I, I i would imagine that just people seeing the presence of a police officer would maybe they would think twice about something you know we've yeah. seen some things out there you know near the pier and and i know another thing we want to probably mention is all of the cameras that yes. i mean i know there was a huge amount of cameras that were purchased through the city and there's literally cameras probably everywhere. Not quite everywhere yet. I don't want to <laughs> give it. Yeah. We're They're watching. Really <laughs> what was that book? 19. Uh, <laughs> anyway, yes, we are working on that again. It's something that's really important to council and the city management team. Um, so for the, the next several years, we do have money set aside to continue to add to the camera right. program. The police department is really focused on where do they go since right. we know where the traffic problems are, where our, our, our problems are with individuals. And so we're, we have a priority list and as we get the cameras, we'll prioritize where that goes. But our goal really is, is to have cameras to hopefully create a, a safer environment down, down, you know, downtown and throughout our community. Right. But also if there is something that goes on, then it's another tool for the police department to hopefully um, be able to investigate no. and, and deter, no. you know, the criminal element or right. solve crimes. Enough. So 
factual evidence. Yeah. You know, that yeah. would be helpful. Because, yeah, the promenade is great. And yeah. But I'm sure, as you know, you know, we've had our, our fair share of vandalism around here and things being messed with and rocks being picked up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I don't know why you would want to do that, but yeah. Um, so yeah, it's just, you know, everything that we can do. And, and again, I, I want to reiterate that when you, if you happen to be downtown or you see something happening, you know, again, don't feel like you're being bothered or if it yeah. is a 911 situation, then call 911. Um, don't hesitate, you know, because more than likely you're not the only one seeing whatever it is that you're seeing. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've witnessed a good amount of things around here too. So, um, so that's a great takeaway. It's just pick up the phone. You know, even if you think someone else might be calling, you make sure that somebody does call because it's important. You know. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay. So, um, just a quick reminder to let everybody know that if you have questions for Chief, of course, feel free to go ahead and put them there in the comments, and we'll do our best to respond to those. Absolutely. And I know we were just talking about the upcoming Memorial holiday or the just past Memorial holiday. But that just is the start of what gets to be just a busy, busy season for yeah. us. You know, school gets out now into June and then we've got, you know, the summer comes in. Yeah. We've got our taste of Pismo yes, in really August, is. car show in September, September Clown Festival. Clown Festival. So what types of challenges did those events or what types of challenges do you see those events bring into our community? Uh, so yeah, we do have a lot of events coming up with uh, Fourth of July, Memorial Day, um, the car show, Taste of Slow or Pismo. God dang it! You're not slow. <laughs> I'm not slow. <laughs> I've only—it's only been a month and a half. Give me a grace period, please. Pismo Taste slow, they yeah, ride. Yeah. Um, so being a small agency, obviously resources are um, a challenge because it's all hands on deck during those those events. We want to make sure we have as many officers in the city. So just reaching out to our partners and within the county to make sure that we have enough um, uh, presence within the, the community to make sure that we're safe, nice. we're controlling traffic. Uh, we have people, you know, whether it's at the park, uh, the beach, the downtown, to just help um, address any issues that come up. So we want to make sure that the residents know there's uh, a police presence so they feel safe um, and that uh, we're able to help people kind of get in and out of the city as, as they're enjoying those events. Um, but we're super excited that we get to have them after, after you know, getting past COVID. And, uh, you know, just spoke with the car show people uh, yesterday on a meeting, and it sounds like it's going to be a great event. I'm looking forward to Over actually, cars. yeah, Over getting, 600 cars. it's cars. amazing. Wow. And, and they have a lot of fun events planned with it. So uh, I think it's going to be great. Super excited to be a part of that. And, and really all of our events, I'm, I'm looking oh, forward yeah. to it. But they do, yeah, they do have challenges as we are a small community and a lot of people want to come and be a part of that. So it's, it's uh, exciting, but um, a, a, but challenging, and and we're, we're prepared. We start preparing months in advance with not only the police department but city uh, city management to make sure that uh, we're not only good hosts but we are um, providing the best possible environment. Definitely, definitely, that works. Well, and just getting traffic through through the city yeah. on those events is, yeah. is a yeah. challenge in itself. So. So yes. we encourage biking, walking, <laughs> so staying at a hotel, take advantage. Yes. Right. But it should be nice enough to be. I mean, we have a lot more people, I feel like, walking downtown mm -hmm. and biking. Um, the e-bikes are obviously a, a really big thing right now. And even though we've had the outdoor dining, I mean, we've had the biggest numbers we've probably ever seen here. And people are able to still get down here and navigate. So. Yeah. Um, you know, exercise is always good. And I think, you know, COVID helped bring that to light for a lot of people. Yeah. And I think as you take advantage of those alternative um, forms of transportation, I would just encourage the community, one, when you're on a bike, obey all laws. You're like a vehicle. So you need to go with the flow of traffic. If there's a stop sign or a red light, please make sure you're stopping right. because as there are more cars and more people, you know, the potential for you know, an accident to happen uh, increases. So realize, you know, if, if you're on a bike, you know, all the laws that would apply to a car still apply to well, you. Well, and being very cautious like yeah. when, when we ride up on, you know, Price Street, and I mean, it's just being very careful yeah. watching those cars. <clears throat> 
you know, because there some people aren't watching. Yes, yeah. and they're in cars and you're on a bike. Yeah. So there, are, yeah, there are challenges. So I just want to encourage everyone to be safe and and just be aware of your surroundings, as we can all easily get distracted exactly. um, with all the things we have at our disposals around us. So, but and with Shell Beach having you know having their bike lanes, and hopefully those of you watching have gotten to Shell Beach to see you know with all the improvements that have been made there. But have there been any issues with the bike lane or anything there? Not in the time that I've been here that okay. that I'm aware of. I mean, I'm excited that we have bikes bike lanes. Uh, uh, the safety of our biking community is a priority, right. um, and I'm glad to see that um, Pismo is really, you know, looking to make sure that there's lanes available to help keep right. them safe. Because um, right. I know it is challenging sometimes in a small and a tighter Definitely. community. Um, so uh, no, I, I think it's so far so it, it's, good. it's good, and and um, hopefully we continue on that path. Okay, yeah. I agree. So. I like it. Yes. So get out there and get on this bike. <laughs> <laughs> that works. And so are there any, is there really anything else that you feel like, um, I mean, what do you foresee the priorities being? I, you know, I think we, those of us that have been here and involved for some time, we kind of see what the priorities are and what the city continues to work on. And um, so is that any different from what you're kind of seeing? No, I, I think it's similar to the city and the, and the business community. I mean, obviously, my priorities are our residents um, um, and making sure that they feel they're protected and, and their law enforcement is responsive to their needs and the challenges in our city. Like I said, when you have a, a high tourist population, that can be challenging for your right. residents. So um, that's one of my priorities. My <clears throat> other priority is our business community. Um, you know, as they manage the inflow of, of tourists and also want to meet the needs of our local residents, um, just making sure that we're there to support them if they have a question or a concern or a challenge within our community, just being available and feeling like their police department is available. And then again, and finally, like I said, as we have tourists come in, I want them to feel like, hey, this town has a great police department. Right. They're friendly. Uh, they're welcoming. Uh, they keep us safe. They hold Present. people accountable. Yeah. So, you know, just managing those uh, uh, as of, they all have different needs and different priorities as a police department, making sure that we're meeting all those needs. That's great. Good stuff. When I know with um, such a large influx of tourists, there's ordinances that people might not know about that maybe they might get stopped for yeah. or they might get ticketed for. Are there anything that you want to share with our viewers that maybe they don't know? Like yeah. you, you're not supposed to do A, B, C, or D. Yeah. <laughs> well, and I still get, because we have the, the Wednesday night farmer's market from mm -hmm. four to seven at the promenade. And I'm still getting people that don't know that they're, that is paid parking. Yeah. You know, so it's like, yeah. it's like, it's paid parking. They're like running to their cars. And I'm like, you will get a ticket that fast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, it is. yeah. We've all gotten them. <laughs> We're supporting the city. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, there is a lot of paid parking down. It's not all metered. Some of it is, is kiosks. So make sure as you pull into parking lots, you look for signs that indicate it's paid parking. Um, and then you just find the appropriate kiosk to pay for the amount of time you think you're going to be there. Um, I think in the downtown, know that our city is non-smoking. So if you are yeah. somebody that smokes, uh, please don't yes. do it in our downtown. Uh, Where's you... Mavis? <laughs> we have to pick up, not we have to, but Lisa does a beach cleanup yes. every Sunday. Yeah. And we pick up so many cigarette butts. Here. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So many cigarette butts. I did. I'm gonna, she doesn't stand on her. <laughs> <laughs> She'll be talking at you later. Um, I did beach cleanup a couple of weeks ago. And I decided to count. I picked up over 200 cigarette yeah, butts. Yeah. yeah. I took my grandson out this past weekend and, you know, had to explain to him that whole thing. And, and you know, by the end of the thing, this poor kid is just like picking up all these butts. And why do people do this? This uh, is gross. And I'm like, yeah. you know, so it's, it's, this is a community that we all enjoy, you mm -hmm. know, and so we want to keep it as clean as possible. And so I'd encourage those of you that do come down to the beach, you know, bring a trash bag. You know, put your trash in it. I mean, for all I care, just tie it up and put it next to the trash can. Mm -hmm. We'll, you know, the city and the chamber will come out. Um, but there's definitely never any shortage of trash. And the things that they find out here sometimes will blow your mind. Yeah, but we won't get into that. Yes. <laughs> yes. So, 
Um, so I know we have the non-smoking ordinance. What is the fine for littering? You know, I am not sure okay. just because I have not written a ticket on it. Um, and often we don't control the fines. Uh, the okay. police department doesn't set them. The city hasn't. So I haven't looked at all the fine schedules to okay. be able well, to give that Lisa answer. Well, don't give Lisa a ticket book. Yes. Yes. <laughs> 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 Lisa, <laughs> yes. Lisa has been asking for a ticket book. Yeah. I stopped at your shop the, the other day. She's like, you know how many sites I could write on this corner? I'm like, no, Lisa. <laughs> um but yeah, tra I mean, thank you for mentioning the trash. Other things, um, you know, especially in the downtown area that people don't realize is just riding bikes and, and skateboards, you know, really on the boardwalk and ar around that area. It just creates a safety hazard. So and now dogs on the pier. Yeah, and that was the other one I was going to say. And, and again, that's an innocent one. You have your dog, yeah. you bring them on vacation, you want to go see the pier. Um, but um, we do have an ordinance and, and it is related just concerns of uh, making sure that we're not polluting the water or contaminating right. things below. Right. So. So those are some of the, I'd say, the ones that maybe people don't always realize that, that we do have in place. Yeah, and those are good reminders, definitely. Yes. All right, everybody, like we mentioned earlier, feel free to ask questions and we'll fill those as they come in. And um, the one question I have for you, what do you so what, what does the chief do for fun? <laughs> Like, what, do, what does a chief do for fun? What does any chief do for fun? <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, uh, it, it, yeah. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> Not make decisions. <laughs> um, no, uh, you know, I, I live in the perfect area because getting out and hiking um, yeah. and with my family and my wife and enjoying all that we have yeah. to offer, you know, uh, often I go places and especially as a police chief and they go, oh, I vacation there all the time. And I always say, how cool is it to say I work and I live in a place that is a, a destination location. So I, I, I try to take care of that. Um, other than that, you know, my hobbies, I, I love woodworking. That's mm -hmm. when uh, I have a shop at my house oh, and uh, I have a creative side that I like to build and create. And that's, uh, you know, do that while listening to Neil Diamond and I'm in my happy place. Nice. So. <laughs> Uh, um, yeah, and just spend time with my family and make sure that I'm present so when I'm not here. So the kids look at you like, I mean, how cool would it be to have a dad as a as a, a um, and you know, I think yeah, they they think it's cool, but all their all their friends are afraid of me. <laughs> <laughs> And, and I'm a pretty nice, easygoing guy, but for some reason they just think, I know bad? what they're doing Is wrong. Yeah. They're like, gotta watch out for their dad. But okay, no. So you have a daughter, because that would be yeah. a play <laughs> I have a very good daughter, so it's uh, yeah, I don't I don't worry about her too much. Uh, she's it's yeah. It's the bad. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> they totally fearful. That's right. That's good stuff. Well, um, again, we appreciate your time and yeah. all that you do. And I'm sure we'll be seeing a lot more of you in the very near future. No, I, I hope so. And uh, I'll just throw this out there for those uh, in our business community. If you're having events, things are going on. I can't make all of them. Mm -hmm. But if please invite me. And if I can, um, I love to be involved. I love to come out and, and see people in casual um, uh, settings and, and to par participate. So like I said, being available is important. And if I hadn't have gotten the opportunity to meet you, um, I hope I do in the, in the near future. Yeah, and I think we're going to be setting up probably another meet and greet here coming oh, awesome. up here in okay. Pismo. So, right. so there will be more to come. Yeah. Harmony will let you know. <laughs> yes, she will. <laughs> yes, she will. And a couple of quick <laughs> reminders about beach cleanup, which yes. takes place every Sunday, Sunday morning at 8 a.m. in the Pier Plaza. Come on down and see Lisa and the gang. They have bags and pickers and gloves and masks Everything. and Mavis just might be there. You never know. <laughs> and if you haven't met Mavis, she is our chamber chicken. And the reason why we have her is because <laughs> she is really upset about trash. Oh. Please do not trash our city. Yes. And if you're here, you're visiting for the weekend from out of town, come join us. We're always happy to meet new people. And really, really appreciate yeah, everyone's definitely, support. Definitely, definitely. And a quick reminder that we are having the Wednesday Farmer's Market from 4 to 7. We would love to see you guys out there. We're going to have something special happening next Wednesday where we're going to um, combine it with a ribbon cutting. And then the following Wednesday will be the 16th. So ideally we will be open. So come down and see us then because we'll have some surprises for you. We're not telling you because Chief's here. Uh. <laughs>
kidding. I'll find out. <laughs> 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 All right, everyone. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for tuning Bye. in.